still plays over and over again. I can still hear the ringing in my head. I can still taste the fear of losing my sight. The sound still echoes over and over again. Our flesh and sinew ripping apart. The screams from the hive, they seem so far away. Still not the same, won't ever be. I scream to the sound of silence, loneliness, and dead ends. I felt alone in a room full of people. I can't explain the feeling of not feeling. It stays with you. Every step means more and more. I had no excuses not to become who I am. The scars are a roadmap to where I've been. They allow me to tell our story. Individually and collectively. We have been pronounced dead time and time again. My pain, suffering, and sins of the past. Allow us to now breathe a new life. This is bigger than any individual physical misfortune. We don't need your life support. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. It is a daily reminder. That I am. That I am. That I am. That we are. That we are. That we are. That we are. Hard to kill. No excuses. No fear. No guts. No glory. Live from the factory of Dallas, Texas, Impact Wrestling welcomes you to Hard to Kill, presented by the Free Fall in theaters January 14th. What a night this could be for the, the newly mentioned Mrs. Cardona, Chelsea Green. Absolutely. In, in, a, in a business where there are very few firsts, this is the first knockout X division ultimate X match. And man, oh man, sit back and enjoy. The winner claims a future Impact Knockout Women's World Title match. Must claim the X above the ring to do so. Steel. How do you see Tasha Steele navigating this dangerous type of match? And that's the hard part because she has so much attitude, so much, so much anger. I can see her using that, channeling that to get the win, or I can see her imploding and just getting left in the dust. It is a hard thing to navigate. Has had a lot of help, admittedly, from Savannah Evans for a number of weeks and months ever since they became uh, close. And now you say that Savannah Evans is not out here with Tasha Steele, so think about that. I cannot wait to see these competitors compete in the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match. Hey, Tom, it's getting a little cold in here. Stay frosty, baby. From the Ice Gardens of Bobbington Estates, Lady Frost! You have to admire the gall of Lady Frost. She has only had a, a handful of matches here as a part of Impact Wrestling, but she said right to the management of Impact that I want to compete in Ultimate X, that this is something I've dreamed of. But you call it gall, I call it intensity, I call it courage to know your worth, to know she can go out there and compete at the highest level with the best knockouts in this company. I think about it, this is an opportunity 19 years in the making, the first ever Ultimate X match. Michael Shane defeating Chris Sabin and Frankie Kazarian for the X Division Championship. And now these women get to write their names in history in this first ever opportunity. Yeah, write their names in history, but then the prize for winning this is a coveted shot to be the number one contender for the Impact Knockouts World Championship. From Los 
Austin, Texas, the Impact Digital Media Champion, Jordan Gray. If somebody's going to get their ass kicked in this match, Jordan Grace is going to do it. Yeah, the, 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 the native Texan right there is being, being welcomed home, and you can see the intensity in her eyes. She loves playing at, with home field advantage. First time ever Digital Media Champion, first time ever Knockouts Ultimate X winner. That's a nice and ring to it. Could history repeat itself in two different ways? Well, we'll see. Oh, and what a whirlwind the last 24 hours has had to have been for Alicia, who is a late addition to this match, of a late replacement, all of a sudden, the opportunity of a lifetime. And it's an opportunity she's always wanted and always wished for. She wants to play on a bigger stage. Well, tonight's the night for Alicia Edwards to show the world exactly what she can do. And by the way, happy birthday, Alicia. Happy birthday. It'll be a great way to spend your birthday if you walk out with a future impact knockout world title opportunity down the line. And the hive comes to their feet. And finally, from the Valley of the Shadows, representing DK, Rosemary! There is something about Rosemary that when you inject her into this match, <laughs> Ultimate X, yeah. anything can happen. Well, she's captivating. She draws you in. It's almost like a Black Widow drawing you in for the kill. She takes you over almost a hyp hypnotic kind of state. But Rosemary uses that and she will use it tonight in this match. I remember being a fan from afar, watching the origins of Decay, Abyss, and Crazy Steve, and Rosemary coming to light as a part of that darkness. And now Rosemary has this opportunity to threaten whomever will be the future Impact Knockouts World Champion. Will that be Mickey James or Deanna Perrazzo by the end of tonight when we see a Texas death match for the title? And that'll be decided later on tonight, but first, the Knockouts Ultimate X is about to get started. History in the making here in an Impact Wrestling ring. This is a special moment in women's wrestling because the whole point is to go from first time ever to commonplace. Yeah, this is about equality. This is about opportunity. In this match, there are no countouts, no disqualifications. To win, you must retrieve the X hanging above the ring and hit the canvas with possession of the X. And look at this, a moment of pause here by all the ladies in it, taking this all in. You've earned this, take it in. And here we go, it's already trending, hashtag hard to kill, and already Grace and Steels are trying to climb the steel beams. Yeah, and that's a smart strategy. Get up to the X quickly. Don't take any, any damage you don't need to, and go right for the X. Very smart, trying to scramble early, trying to end this early, because the longer it goes, the well, worse you're gonna feel. Yeah, and, and the harder it'll be to climb and navigate those ropes. Oh, oh. blockbuster there from Chelsea Green. We talked about how much is on the mind of Chelsea Green. Four years since she had the knockout world title. So many ups and downs for her in her career. Every time Philo she gets going, something happens. It's a series of stop and starts. She goes, breaks an arm, comes back, recovers, Breaks an arm again. Now Chelsea Green is healthy. Can she use this momentum and start this run and keep it going? Steals flips into the ring. Remember, no count outs, no disqualifications. There goes Chelsea Green. And now Tasha Steals trying to do it all on her own. Tasha trying to take the early advantage right there. Going Crucifix. up against the strongest competitor by far in this matchup. In this matchup, in the company. Oh. That hurt my spine just watching it. Here, Jordan is taking over. And now Steele's dumped down to the ring right at the feet of Lady Frost and Alicia. And now Jordan glancing up, but there's Rosemary. Back elbow there by Rosemary. Oh! Rosemary was able to pin Tennille Dashwood of the influence in an eight-person tag last month. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh -oh. Look at that, coming down the ramp there. That is Savannah Evans. Oh, the partner of Tasha Steeles, who just ate a DDT, courtesy of Jordan Grace and D'Lo. There are no disqualifications. It, yes. This is all legal. This is all legal, and it was, Savannah didn't come in at first because it was timely. This was perfectly timed here. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, in the ring, it's Havoc. Havoc of Decay. 
Oh, and look, it's boosting Rosemary up almost at the X. Rosemary's trying to grab the X, and Chelsea oh. Green takes down that. And a, a big drop kick there from Chelsea Green. And now Havoc is out. I mean, why climb the beams and go through those cables when you can just lift somebody up? You That's know brilliant. what? No DQ. Use it. And Green and Alicia trying to scale this beam. And this, this is one of the most dangerous areas on the outside of the structure. Elevate yourself up. Oh, my God! Green and Alicia! Putting it all on the line to make history. And, and you see there, referee Daniel Spencer making sure the competitors are good to go, making sure they can continue. Yeah, I'd like to see a replay of this. Look at this. Both ladies oh. take everyone out. Alicia catching her foot in the ring skirt there. Uh-oh, Lady Frost Wait is coming minute. up. Back to live action. Oh. Lady Frost, the daredevil. Lady Frost has no fear whatsoever. Now, with, with the ring to herself, Lady Frost is climbing up. At putting herself in, uh, with some distance between herself and the rest of the field, and now, oh, there is Jordan Grace closing the gap. And Jordan quickly got over there. And now, Jordan's climbing up the structure. Now Lady Frost, oh, face first off of the steel. You can see the X hanging in the middle of those two cables. And, and Jordan's going way up. Now, now, if anyone can traverse these cables, it's Jordan. She's got this, one of the strongest grips. I've seen this woman deadlift 500 pounds. The strength, the power, and the endurance. And now look at Grace make her way towards the X. And she's doing with ease. Oh, but look behind her. And Jordan's holding the weight of two. Lady Frost trying to tear down Grace, and now Rosemary involved. And now Rosemary, oh, oh sent flying there by Frost, but look at Grace. Jordan is still up there. Oh, and a kick there by Steels, and now Steels trying to pull Grace down, and you can understand Grace was holding on to that grip for a good 30 plus seconds. Yeah, with the weight, with the weight of Lady Frost. Uh oh. Some unique alliances in these multi-competitor matches. Now, Chelsea Green going up. What a honeymoon this would be for the Cardona family. That's what Matt and Chelsea call this opportunity here. Hard to kill for both of them, considering they just got married on New Year's. And Chelsea scaling out now. Oh, oh lost grip. Chelsea. Lost grip. Chelsea nearly got there and then crashed into Tasha Steeles. Oh. Now. Rosemary's trying to ascend up. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Alicia's got Kendra. And I've heard she's a little uh, obsessive with Kendra. Oh, yeah. Very liberal with her. She, oh. will, she will do a punishment to anybody with Kendra. Oh. And now just waylaying Rosemary with Kendra. And Havoc looking on from the outside. And now Alicia trying to make the climb here inside the factory in Dallas, Texas. And now I, I will say that, you know, with, with, with Alicia being the lightest competitor in here, it may be to her advantage to get up there. I love that she's doing this in Jordans. Good for her. Oh, she's, she's shimmying out. Smart way to go out there. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Che Chelsea's got Kendra. And, and Alicia's looking at him. And Rosemary's right there. Oh, my God! Maybe the slight distraction of Chelsea Green holding on to Kendra got the attention of Alicia. Well, you could see Alicia was looking back at Chelsea. And now, everyone's down. But look, Tasha Steele is up. Tasha Steele is up. Tasha all by herself here on the cables, but here comes Jordan Grace. And Jordan's quickly behind her. And look at how close Steele is to the X. Trying to get to the center of these cables. Oh, my God. And once again, 
Steele. Steele's trying to beat Grace there, but Grace is going to be able to hold on to this for much longer, even though she was doing this same uh, exercise minutes ago. Oh, no! No, no, no! Tailbone first for both women into the mat. Look at this. Look at this spear here. And then this. I'm telling you right now, look at this. Oh. It, it's like, it, it looked like a sky high from 18 feet in the air. You would like that, wouldn't you? Of course I would. Uh, wait a minute, look at the far side of your screen there, left side, it's Lady Frost going up the steel beam. And, and I wonder if Lady Frost's gymnastic background can help her in a match like this. And Lady Frost, you see she's looking at her footing and, and getting her grip. Your drop! Wow! Two words for Lady Frost, no fear. Winter has arrived in Texas. Lady Frost taking out competition at ringside. Look at this, Lady oh. Frost from the top of the structure. Lady Frost just with the temperature drop and hold now. On, hold on, wait a minute, back to live action. Jordan Grace is back up on the cable. Jordan Grace is scaling out, and she's doing with ease. You see her looking over her shoulder, looking for Tasha Steeles. Jordan Grace is getting close. Tasha Steeles trying to mix things up a little bit. Look at Jordan Grace change her position to get defensive. Well, but that's good because now all the weight is off Jordan's arm. She's wrapping her legs around, around the cable. Oh, but look, whoa, 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 Chelsea whoa. Green. Chelsea Green trying to go for the opposite oh. cable, and now goes Grace in a heap. And now it's Green and Steeles. Both women trying to unhook the X. You gotta gain sole possession of the X. And you gotta you gotta get down to back to the ring. Both, both. Oh, both, both, like, both have gotta hit the canvas. Well, one of them's gotta hit the canvas with the X. And Tasha Steele yes. wins the first ever knockouts Ultimate X. Tasha Steele. Tasha Steele makes history. And just as Tasha Steele made history, Chelsea Green came within a heartbeat of securing the X. Again, you have to retrieve the X and get down to the canvas with the X. Sole possession of the X. Tasha Steeles has secured a future Impact Knockouts World Title match. Right there, Tasha Victorious holding the X up for the world to see. Is how Tasha did it. Secured the X and just launched herself down to the canvas to get the win. An impressive, impressive win here for Tasha Steele. A match made famous by the likes of Saban, Daniels, Kazarian, Styles, Duck, Skipper, Shane, Williams, Shelley. Add Tasha Steele's name to that list. I don't care. Take your hat off to every competitor in this match. That was brutal. That was above the ropes. That's what an ultimate X match is. And listen, there's no disqualification in this match if we saw Havoc, we saw Savannah Evans get involved, but give credit to Stasha, to Stasha Steele. When it mattered, she got the job done on her own. Yeah, when it, be, when it was done to gut check time, Stasha Steele stepped up to the plate and walked home the number one contender for the Knockouts World title. Now the question is, who will leave hard to kill as the Knockouts World Champion? And I guarantee you, Tasha is going to be watching that match in the back later on tonight. Well, tonight, of course, is a Hard to Kill pay-per-view event, and it is presented by The Free Fall, which is in theaters on January 14th. And right now, I want to show you this special feature, taking a look at the trailer of The Free Fall, our sponsor here tonight in Dallas, Texas. We're just getting started with the action, but I want you guys to take a look at this clip before we go any further. I can't wait to see this movie. Take a look. I didn't know you could play the piano. Well, there's a lot about me you don't know. Sometimes the voices in our head are there to 
guide us. It's okay. <laughs> Stay with us. No, 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 no. Everything's gonna be all right. Hello? Are you there? Everything is going to be different now. You saw it for yourself. There was no one there, Sarah. The third floor is off limits. Try to sleep well tonight. Yeah. No, I can't wait to see that. My goodness. <laughs> Hard to Kill is presented by The Free Fall, which is in theaters and streaming on January 14th. Welcome to Ringside in the, Inside the Impact Zone. He's D'Lo Brown. I'm Tom Hannafin. I am thrilled to be here tonight because the men who have sat in this chair from Tanay, Borash, Matthews, and Stryker, it is an honor to be a part of this lineage. And now having seen the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match, yes. we have some other first time ever's here tonight. Oh, we got some business to take care of tonight. Let's get it started. Let's talk about the Ring of Honor World Championship being defended tonight here in Dallas. It is the first time ever Ring of Honor World Championship match ever defended inside an Impact Wrestling ring. Jonathan Grisham defends against Chris Sabin. And then Trey Miguel defends the X Division title against the, against Steve Macklin, the man who has no fear. The man who's never been pinned, never submitted. Steve Macklin, one last opportunity at the X Division title. And meanwhile, it's hardcore war. The Good Brothers, the tag champs, with Violent by Design versus Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, he and Rhino. Jonah will go one on one with the walking weapon Josh Alexander in a match that is going to be hard hitting. And then another hard hitting match, this one for the Impact World title. Moose defends against Matt Cardona and W. Morrissey. No champion's advantage for Moose tonight. And then in our main event, Mickey James defends the Knockouts World title against former champion in 2021 Knockout of the Year, Deanna Perrazzo in a Texas death match. However, earlier today, Mickey James addressed her headline worthy week. You know, it felt good. It seemed that I was on the tip of everyone's tongue last night, on just on everybody's thumbs as they were talking about history in the making when the knockouts world champion is walking into the Royal Rumble. But do not think for one second that I'm going to let that high get in the way of what I have in front of me tonight. Tonight, it is Dallas, Texas. Tonight, it is hard to kill. Tonight, it is a Texas death match. Deanna, the stakes are really, really high, and you and I have been through war, and it is not a secret that we don't like each other. So tonight's match is pretty damn fitting because everything is bigger in Texas. That means not just the one, two, three, but that means that you are not getting up for 10 seconds. So although last night might have been some glorious news, what's gonna be more glorious is my celebration tonight when I walk out of here as your knockouts world champion. Deanna Perrazzo, a lot of buzz surrounding Mickey James and tonight's Impact Knockouts World Championship match. And from what we've heard, she seems very confident going into tonight. What's your response to this? Great, Gia, great. I'm glad Mickey's confident about tonight. She's clung to me for her 15 minutes of fame, and tonight, it ends. Tonight is the only night in the last two years I've walked into a pay-per-view without my Knockouts Championship. And tonight, it ends because I am the virtuosa, and I have a plan A and a plan B. <laughs> so tonight, so, hey, Diana, I overheard what you're saying over here, and I see where you're going with this. 
Just to remind you, Scott and I put in a no contact clause, and that ends tonight for you and Mickey when that match begins. Mm -hmm. But Matt Graywalt, if you even put your hands on Mickey, you're fired. And Deanna, you lose. Got it? Got it. Good luck. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Time after time again, this and they have a conspiracy. And you know what? It's fine. It's fine because I walked into Impact Wrestling and I won the Knockouts Championship in my first match. And you think I'm not going to do that again tonight, Jim? Do you think I'm not going to do that again? Absolutely. She's are. done. And you know what? She might walk into tonight, but she's definitely not walking into the Royal Rumble. One of Perrazzo's plans just went out the window in the form of Ray Walt. High stakes in the Knockouts World title match later on. But right now, our first championship bout of the night, the X Division title set to be defended, Trey Miguel against Steve Macklin. Gentlemen, this match is for the X Division Championship. It is set for one fall. Introducing first the challenger from Rutherford, New Jersey, Steve McClan. When you do two tours in Afghanistan, your concept of right and wrong goes out the window. Steve Macklin doesn't give a damn what he's had to do to get to another X Division Championship match. But the point is this, D'Lo, if he does not beat Trey Miguel tonight, Macklin cannot challenge Miguel anymore so long as Trey is champion. And I guarantee you that's the only thing that is on Macklin's mind right now. If he loses, he can never challenge Trey Miguel again. You can't state that point enough. And Macklin is on fire. The man who's never been pinned or submitted in Impact Wrestling, Macklin, ready for mayhem. His opponent from Toledo, Ohio, the X Division champion, Trey Miguel. Are we just in the multiverse right there? Thought we saw some rascals. <laughs> From rascal to champion, he is Trey Miguel and one of the fastest rising stars in all of professional wrestling. Oh, oh, man, oh my, my God! A scud! A scud oh, fired off by Macklin. The bell has not even rung yet. And I said it before, the scud, it ain't pretty. It's just effective and Macklin right there took the jump and is trying to take the early advantage. And this match, again, it is not yet official. It is not yet underway. But look at Macklin jumping the champion. I said it moments ago, D'Lo. Macklin does not care what he has to do to win this title. No, and I agree with you. The only thing he cares about is leaving his next to the champion. But Trey with a drop kick. Sending Macklin all the way down the ramp. And now Miguel has got to regroup. And, and we cannot ring the bell till both men are back in the ring in a neutral position. Oh, oh, he went for a meteor instead, just trying to wrangle Macklin. Oh, and Trey in the ring, hitting the rope momentum. And now Miguel, the stall DDT. Again, the match is still not officially underway, but Miguel has turned things around, showing the resolve of a champion. Now, Trey, here we go. Trey's getting Macklin in the ring. Once Trey gets in, we get a neutral position. The ref can start. There's the bell. This match is underway. Our first championship match of the evening here at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view. Trey Miguel versus Steve Macklin for the X Division title. Oh! They put on a thriller at turning point in a triple threat match against Laredo Kid as well. And right there, Trey got out of the crosshairs. Oh! And now Trey. He's creating so much space. What is he doing? Oh, kill on the top. Oh my God, McKill went into the crowd. He's in the front row. That's worth the price admission. Oh, good. She's okay. Okay. Big hug. <laughs> talking about, talking about being part of the action. Look at this. Trey with such elevation and force. Did enough damage to Macklin. And now Miguel back in pursuit of his opponent. The question is, how can Macklin recover from a, a shot like that? Oh, that's how. Oh, there you go, right there. Right to the midsection. Oh, 
slung into that steel barricade. And now Macklin has taken over. And this is where Macklin wants to be. He wants to make this fight ugly. He wants to make this match ugly because that's where he likes to live, down in the trenches. Oh, and look at this, Macklin. Macklin tosses Michael again into the barricade. Toss him like a loaf of bread. And now Macklin is intent. Look at the abrasion on the back of Macklin from already earlier on in this match. Remember, the title cannot change hands be a count out or disqualification. Macklin's got to pin or submit Miguel inside the ring. Oh, oh. And again, you can see Macklin's strategy. Take out the back, take out the, the weight bearing structure of Trey Miguel, then he cannot use his offense and elevate above the ropes. Macklin into a cover for the title and a kick out here by Miguel. And you can see how badly Miguel is favoring the ribs. Yeah, and, and that's going to hurt because now Trey is going to shorten his win because he can't take deep breaths in. He can't use it, he can't engage his core. Oh, you see this constant attack on the low back. Backbreaker there by Macklin. I've known Steve Macklin a long time. This is exactly what he set out to do when he joined Impact Wrestling one year ago. He believes he is hard to kill, and tonight he's gonna make Trey Miguel put him down. Oh, in defense of the X Division title. I'm gonna go one step further. He's not been hard to kill since he got the Impact Wrestling. He's been hard to kill his entire life. Oh my God! A clothesline to the side of the head. Trey could be out. You see referee, you see the referee getting in there. Brandon Tolles checking on uh, Trey to make sure he he's, can compete still. And you understand the method in which Macklin was able to get this matchup, jumping Miguel, trapping Miguel at one point, endless mind games, and eventually got Scott Moore and Gail Kim to give him what he wanted with, however, this stipulation. Oh, yeah, he had to give, give something to get something, so he's willing to risk it all right now to become X Division champion. And think about the pressure that Miguel put on himself he was so disappointed he didn't pin Macklin at turning point. That was what he wanted. He pinned Laredo Kid. Macklin kicked at the time. Cover! Big Uranagi gets a cover, tucks the arm, Miguel, able to kick out. And see, that's when a cover that's too deep works against you. You saw how uh, Macklin rotated back, which allowed Trey to kick out and slide out the back door. Now Macklin slowing it down, recouping and regrouping. Again, right to the midsection. With militaristic precision, Macklin is just going right at the low back. Oh, and another backbreaker. Cover on Miguel, and a kick out by the champion. It is clear for everyone to see what Macklin's game plan is in this match, and he's executing it so far to perfection. You see how he doesn't rush in everything. He takes his time, he's pacing, he's surveying the entire territory before he makes another move. Once again, what well, we'll think about going to the midsection. Miguel trying to find an answer through the ropes. And oh, right to the face, and Miguel down to the side of our announce desk. And they're right here in front of us, and we better watch out. We don't want to become part of the action. Yep. Oh! Dare I say a Cactus Jack special elbow on the floor. Macklin, his intensity is on another level right now. Oh, no, 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 he's trying to oh, use the edge of the ring. He is not trying to beat Trey Miguel right now. He's trying to end Trey Miguel. Inside the ring, this time for the championship and a kick out. And that was a, there was not a lot on that kick out there. Trey is fading and fading fast. So Trey had his arms trapped there, and now one more time, he is trapped center of the ring here by Steve Macklin. And you hear the impact faithful trying to give Trey that extra little motivation right now. And this has not been a conventional X Division match. Steve Macklin doesn't care about that, frankly. He doesn't care what the impact zone wants to see. No, he wants his match. He's going to draw you into his match. Uh, Steve Macklin's that kind of guy who will make you play left hand. Oh. He'll take away your best offense and use it against you so you can't use it. And Mac 
Lightfoot trying to rearrange the spine of Trey Miguel. And now Trey is trying to fight out. There's very little on the on, on anything right now. Trey is been, look, there's nothing on those punches. There's nothing on them. Oh, looking for the knees here. Well, maybe those knee strikes are working, yes. Such a dangerous thing about Trey Miguel. He's, we know how he can be a high flyer and be athletic, but his strikes are precision perfect. Now, Trey has got to create space so he can up his game. This close quarter fighting favors Macklin. Thought about another backbreaker to Macklin, and now Miguel finally catches yeah. Macklin. Oh, double stop right to the heart. And this could be an opportunity here. This could be the turning point in this match. Trey Miguel with an opportunity here to regroup. Valuable time here to breathe. Yeah, and this benefits both competitors, but more so I think Trey, because he's not getting beat on right now, and he's getting time to recover. Creating space here, Trey is. Do or die here at Hard to Kill for Steve Macklin in the reign of Trey Miguel. Oh, one last opportunity to take the X Division title from Miguel. And see, oh! And see, this is where Trey has got to excel now. He's got to elevate the game above the top rope. And now Macklin underneath the bottom rope. This is where Trey Miguel can be creative. Creative, innovative, and dangerous. What is Trey doing? Oh, oh he's going for Meteora. Uh-oh, no, no, he's going to crosshairs. He's going to crosshairs. Oh! The shoulder buried into Trey Miguel. Oh my, it almost knocked Trey completely out of the ring. And now both men spill to the floor. And let, let's, let's definitely take a look at this. Caught in the crosshairs oh. in a new spot, cuts him in half. Wow. Now Macklin realizes he has to pin or submit Miguel in the center of the ring to win the title. Back inside, shoots the half, hook to the leg for the X Division crown and a kick out. And not a strong kick out. Both men, this is a war of attrition here, and it's wearing on both men right now. Macklin's almost talking to himself. Is there frustration oh! into the mind of Macklin? Oh! Macklin will find a solution. Oh, straight jackhammer elbows right to the side of the face and jaw. Time to tag him and bag him. Thinking about mayhem for all. And no, Trey Cowan is out of it. He turned that into a pile driver of sorts. It, it, nice counter there from Trey Miguel. Oh, the score beat kick. Kenny Rose did got him. Oh, nice job by Miguel to retain his title. Could not hook the other leg. Great sequence there by Miguel, and you could see him trying to kick his leg out so he could hook Macklin's. Just couldn't do it in time. No, he, yeah, and, and right now, it seems like both men are disjointed because of the amount of, of, of punishment they've taken in this match. And now Trey creating space now. What's he going to do with it? is down. Could Trey Miguel be thinking about the Meteor? He's going up right now. Look. Top turnbuckle. Miguel all looked to bait in Macklin. Oh, catch him in the back elbow there. Macklin doing anything he can to slow up Miguel. We saw the frustration on the face of Macklin moments ago. Nope. Keller, oh, nice, nice block and a, a punch right back. Now both men exchanging blows here on the apron, and this is extremely dangerous. Knee strike there. Macklin is down. Now, can Trey take advantage of this? Now, Trey trying to set up Macklin here near the bottom rope. Macklin's in a lot of trouble right now. What is Trey doing? Oh, oh no!
take a look at this meteor oh. to the floor. And yes, you can see Macklin's head striking the guardrail right there. Right where the guardrails connect. Miguel going for broke to take out Macklin outside the ring, however. Well, yes, outside the ring, you cannot get the, the pinfall out there. But right there, that's a way of kind of resetting this match. Count of five, Miguel rolls back inside the ring. Count of six, title cannot change hands. Maybe a count out or disqualification. Oh, wait a minute, and Miguel, he wants to do this the right way. He doesn't want a count out victory. He wants a pinfall. He wants to pin Macklin and set the record straight. Macklin is down. Miguel, get in the aura. Can he hook the legs? Hook. Cover. Oh, and a kick out. Somehow Macklin kicked out. How did Macklin do that? Where did that strength come from to kick out? And you can see the look on Trey's face. No one is kicked out of the Meteora. Trey Miguel wanted to be the first man to pin or submit Steve Macklin in Impact Wrestling, but somehow Macklin's still alive. And look at the look of intensity right now. Trey Miguel is, is glancing at Macklin. And Macklin keeps talking through this. He's trying to go Miguel even more. Buzzsaw kick. No defense. He couldn't put his hands up in time. Brain buster by Miguel. And now. Trey is going up again. He's going up to the high rent district. One more time. Miguel wants to end it. Meteor! Wow, the number two! Cover! Miguel retains! Macklin's been pinned! Here is your winner. And still X Division Champion, Trey Miguel! Trey Miguel is the first man to pin. Steve Macklin in Impact Wrestling. Trey Miguel just slayed the dragon, the dragon that has been chasing him for months. Trey Miguel, what a strong win for your X Division champion. And most importantly, Trey Miguel retains his X Division title here at Hard to Kill. Our first title defense this evening here in Dallas. Well, we were expecting to see the Knockouts World Tag Team titles defended. Unfortunately, the inspiration is not able to be here to compete tonight. The influence has something to say about that. Madison Rain to Neil Dashwood. Obviously, the plan was for you two to challenge for the Knockouts World Tag Team Championships tonight here at Hard to Kill. But due to unforeseen... But, but, but the inspiration decided to be unprofessional with two U's and just didn't show up to work. Like, who even does that? Yes. Right, Neil, and it was nothing like the time you didn't show up to work for a month. Right. Like, you had a photo shoot. Oh, my totally God. Totally different. The location, the lighting, everything was perfect. It was perfect. I know. As always. How hot was that shoot? But, like, I still can't stop thinking, like, could one of them not have shown up to defend the Tag Team Championships? Like, I don't get it. Technically, you can't have a tag team match without two. But you make a great point. They should have made this a priority. They should have shown up to Literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them to face us for their tag team championships. Like, right. But like, as far as they knew. Actually, though, we're still gonna have the match and we're still gonna become <laughs> Impact Knockout Tag Team Champions. It's just gonna have to be when Impact debuts Fort Lauderdale on January 27th. But you make a great point as far as they knew. You guys, once as, far as, I, as far as I can tell, you guys are already the champions. Look, I've already started to Photoshop you guys with the, pig, with the belts. Look at this. Oh my god. Look at this. Ah, look at that one. We look hey. so Not good. You. Hey, we look so good. Oh, let me take it here a little All right, bit. One more? Yeah, we're yeah. going to put it on the big screen, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The influence doing influential things. You know, I am so excited about this. My first time here, and I get to do it alongside Ian Riccoboni of Ring of Honor. The voice of Ring of Honor is here in Dallas. It's very appropriate. First time ever the Ring of Honor world title defended in an Impact Wrestling ring. It's incredible. First of all, Tom, congratulations. I'm so happy to be here. And D'Lo, it's a thrill to call some matches with you. And, and you know what? 20 years of parallel history come to a convergent line here tonight. For 20 years, two of the most influential organizations in the world, Ring of Honor and Impact, have led the way in professional wrestling. But this is what it's all about right here. For the Ring of Honor World Championship, 
we will see Jonathan Gresham defend the Ring of Honor World Championship for the very first time in an Impact ring. And he's going to be taking on somebody who's owed a title shot for the last three years in Chris Saban. Chris Saban, obviously an Impact competitor, however, deep roots in Ring of Honor. So this is a very special opportunity. We've got Ian here, and you know what? It wouldn't be a Ring of Honor World title match without the Ring of Honor ring announcer, Bobby Cruz. Following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the Ring of Honor World Championship. This match will be contested under pure wrestling rules. Here are the rules. Every match begins and ends with a code of honor handshake. Each wrestler has three rope breaks to stop submission holds and pinfalls. After a wrestler exhausts his rope breaks, submission and pin attempts on or under the ropes by his opponent are illegal. Closed fist punches to the face are not permitted. The first use of a closed fist will get a warning. The second will be a disqualification. And there will be a 20 count when a wrestler is on the floor. You know, this is incredible, Tom. I've been looking forward to this. For those that have followed Ring of Honor and Impact, we know how much Chris Saban has meant to both organizations. But for folks at home that may have not been following Ring of Honor in 2018, Chris Saban's actually due a title shot for taking Jay Lethal, the man Jonathan Gresham beat for the championship, to a draw. He earned that title shot back in 2018. This is a match three years in the making. Well, let's understand the stakes of this evening, because let's say Chris Saban wins the Ring of Honor world oh. title. I, I can feel your heart palpitating just sitting next to you. I mean, if an Impact wrestler were to win the Ring of Honor world title and the first time ever it was defended in an Impact ring, tough times for Ring of Honor fans. Well, here's what I know right now, Tom. I know that Chris Saban will assume the scheduled title defenses of Jonathan Gresham should he walk out of the building here in Dallas here tonight as the Ring of Honor world champion. But it's gonna take a lot to pry that championship out of one of the hottest wrestlers in wrestling. He's 2-0 in title defenses. He's won eight in a row against stars like Brody King, Dragon Lee, Jay Lethal, who he defeated for the championship. He's the longest reigning pure champion in the history of Ring of Honor, one half of the longest reigning tag team champions, and he's 14-1 in pure rules matches. And that's an uphill battle to climb for any individual. And there you see the historic Ring of Honor World Champion. So how lopsided is this considering it's pure rules for this match? Well, that's a great question because he has won out of those 14 victories. He's won in 12 different ways, D'Lo. And you know as anybody how tough that is to game plan for anybody who can beat you in that many ways. When you can come at an opponent from multiple platforms and use different techniques and to secure victories, that makes you a dangerous individual. That makes you a tough challenge. And Jonathan Gresham, he is not going to relinquish his title. It's his first title match. He's going to work his ass off to defend it. Jonathan Gresham not only waving his own flag, but is carrying the flag for Ring of Honor tonight here at Hard to Kill. Introducing first to my left, the challenger. Wrestling out of Detroit, Michigan. Weighing 202 pounds, Chris Steven! His opponent to my right is wrestling out of Atlanta, Georgia. Weighing 205 pounds, he is representing the foundation and he is the Ring of Honor World Champion, the Octopus. Jonathan Grusha! And these two men are linked. They were in a group in Ring of Honor called Search and Destroy. Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns, took both Jay White and Jonathan Gresham under their wing. Jay White went on to main event Madison Square Garden with the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Jonathan Gresham becoming the Ring of Honor World Champion. I'd say that investment in mentorship has paid off. This time in wrestling is astounding. We saw the news earlier on about Mickey James for opportunity in the Royal Rumble match. Now you have the Ring of Honor World Championship being defended for the first time ever in an Impact Wrestling ring. And there is the Code of Honor handshake as per pure rules to get this started. We're underway in Dallas. Here we go. It's going to be a heck of a bout. 
With Jonathan Gresham, one thing you're going to look for is he will try and beat you quick. He's beaten opponents with sunset flips. He's beaten them with La Maestra cradles. He's beaten them with, quote unquote, simple moves like a bayonet elbow. You got to watch that if you're Chris Saban to the back of the head. One thing that's been great to see, D'Lo, about Chris Saban is his resurgence as of late. You and I have talked about his uh, recent rivalry with Ace Austin. It's given him some new life. Well, it's given him new life. You know, he's competed for the x Championship, and now he's going to compete for the Ring of Honor World title. You know, Chris Saban is a guy who wants to let everyone know he can still go. <laughs> Gresham able to take Saban off his feet. Yeah, the one thing I love about Gresham is the fact that he's not just going to come at you as a striker. He's not going to come at you as a grappler. He's going to bring all the disciplines. He can beat you in multiple ways. Gresham here looking to carry the flag. And I, on behalf of Ring of Honor, I do want to thank Impact Wrestling for allowing the torch to stay lit in April. We, we plan to resume operations. You see trending hard to kill. I know this match had a lot of people talking, and it will have a lot more people talking if Chris Saban joins the exclusive club. Wow. Oh, look at that. Great now, sequence. Yeah, look at the stare off right now. Both men showing they're even at this point. Saban could join the, the exclusive club of Eddie Edwards, Austin Aries, and Samoa Joe as the individuals that have captured both the Impact Championship and the Ring of Honor World Championship. That's it's pretty rare air. You know, Chris Saban has been Mr. Everything. He's won every championship in Impact Wrestling, so it would be fitting for him to bring the Ring of Honor World's title home. How does Saban keep up with Gresham? Because Gresham does a great job of keeping his competitors guessing. I think for Saban, I, Saban has taught Jonathan Gresham a lot of what Jonathan Gresham knows, but Jonathan Gresham has played the long game throughout his career. He took the long path to Ring of Honor, took the long path to Impact. He's a man who traveled to 13 different countries by the time he was 30 years of travel. Cover here and a kick out by the champion. That close to Saban. I think a lot of Chris Saban's DNA is in the wrestling psyche of Jonathan Gresham. I think that's what he has to take advantage of. I, I think he sees a student in Jonathan Gresham, for better or worse. And if he could tap into that DNA, I think... Oh, oh that is very dangerous this early in a match for Saban. And right now you can, Gresham. you can see Gresham who's using the game plan. He's attacking different points to keep Saban off balance and not letting Saban know exactly where he's going to be attacked. And uh, to your point, Russell might have been a student at one point, but now he's become a leader, not just for Ring of Honor, but his own promotion. That's right. He, he's carrying the banner of pure wrestling and, and trying to keep the legacy of Ring of Honor alive with Terminus, which he will... Oh, oh, oh. wow, well, the ankle's not supposed to bend like that. Oh, God. Saban's going to have to endure. Oh, and it's a trap. Hold on, into a cover, into a Two. cover. Saban able to kick out, but the ankle felt the damage, and look at how quickly Gresham is back on top of his opponent. And I say this, if you've not seen Jonathan Gresham wrestle, which you have to be living under the rock for the last few years, this man is one of the best. You say 1,000 holds, I say 2,000 holds. This man, can he can attack you. Look at joint manipulation right here. Oh, cover, cover. Saban has to bridge out. And then think about this, he's not even started throwing strikes yet. Now into the cover, shoulders down, and a kick out. I love the way Gresham gets back to his feet right away, continuing to look for the arm into the head scissor there. And even just a window of opportunity, and it's gone for Saban. You've got to react in milliseconds yes. against Gresham. Absolutely. And Gresham is one thing, he always maintains wrist control. Oh! Big kick by Saban. Saban needed that. Yeah, Saban needs that A, for he needs a breather, and B, needed to switch the momentum of this match. Able to slow the match down for the first time. That's where Gresham really excels. That's where he caught Jay Lethal off guard to win the Ring of Honor World Championship. When he turned the pace up, looking for the quick pins and the quick submissions, did the same thing to Dragon Lee. Count of six. Remember, it's a 20 count here on the on the floor with pure wrestling rules. And under pure rules, the championship can change hands on count out and disqualification. An interesting wrinkle. Saban dives into the ring. Gresham went back to the arm. Swiss lock here. Keeps going back to that arm, D'Lo. Why is that so important with Saban right now that Gresham yeah. keeps focusing on that left arm? Continuing to work on that arm will, will reduce the grip hand strength of Chris Saban, not allowing him maybe to hook the cradle shot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it's, he's, it, you know, Gresham is playing the long game. You can see this. Big forearm shot, remember, closed fists, not legal. Yeah, see, right there. Pure rules. Saban could not whip off Gresham. Oh, and a 
Great job there by Gresham. Saban had an answer, however. Now Gresham into a cover. Bridge out by Saban. Trying to keep pace with the octopus. Oh! Face first one at DDT by Saban to win the Ring of Honor World title and he kick out. What an exchange right there. That's from two wrestlers who know each other extremely well. We got to take another look at this DDT. Dila, watch this. Look at this up Boom. and then rotates Grisham into position, spiking down his head and came within a heartbeat, a heartbeat of becoming the Ring of Honor World's Champion. So, so close. And now Saban back up to his feet. Imagine, Ian, the pressure on Grisham. All the things we mentioned before, how he is trying to stand up on behalf of an entire company tonight. It's incredible. I can't imagine what's going through his heart and his mind Ooh. right now, but it, I, I can see the strategy here. Grabbing that wrist, looking for the double wrist lock. Great job. Back to the injured arm of Saban. Don't forget about the ankle. And see, right there, a simple <laughs> shoulder tackle is hurting Saban's arm because Gresham is working on it for 5, 10, 15 Ooh. minutes in this match already. And that's the incredible thing about Gresham. Before you know oh. it, you're in trouble. You are in deep, deep trouble like Saban is now. Oh. Be right to the midsection, and now Saban off the top rope. Oh! Spinning neck breaker, great job. Now here's the cover, hook to the leg, and a foot on the bottom rope. That is one gone. One rope break gone for that Gresham. That is rope break number one used by Jonathan Gresham. And Gresham throughout the pure tournament and through his pure matches, so good at knowing where he is in the ring. He has a counter for everything. He also knows at all times where he is in the ring. He's not afraid to use the rope breaks when he needs to. And let's reiterate the rule. You get three rope breaks on pinball submission. After that, it does not matter oh. anymore. Left arm of Chris Saban has got to be in bad shape right now. Went for a kick there, and this is the compact strength now of Jonathan Grisham and the attitude to boot. Open hand slap right there. Oh! He locked in a dragon screw leg whip. It is very hard to comprehend what part of Chris Saban doesn't hurt right now. Gresham is dissecting Saban at this point, the eight-time former X Division champion, former Impact World champion. Gresham has made this his match right now here in Dallas. But again for the arm, Saban able to avoid for a moment. And this is where Saban needs to create space and, and ratchet the game up. Off the middle, oh, oh, and own song. Oh, right back to the arm. And changing gears. Here's our strikes. He's won matches with this before, incapacitating his opponents with those strikes. Trying to wear out Saban. Here's the cover to retain. Here in Dallas, no. Look at that. Right to the face lock here with the cross face. And now Saban's thinking about reaching out to the bottom rope and burning one of his rope breaks. Amazing how, how Grisham keeps body control the entire time. He's never far from his opponent. And Saban's got his vision back here. Gresham trying to change up the hold here, trying to get underneath the chin of Saban. Now just trying to pull Saban backwards, trying to move the hand back now. Yeah, trying to avoid allowing Saban to get this, this rope break oh. here. Oh, look at that. Almost teasing him, almost taunting him. He knows that if he exhausts all three, he's in no man's land. He's trying to do everything he possibly can to keep Saban from the rope. Almost creating a guessing game. Oh, oh. but Saban does grab the rope. So that's one gone for Saban and one gone for Gresham. That is rope break number one used by Chris Saban. And I have to wonder, D'Lo, Tom, was that almost intentional? He had him going back and forth. Did he want him to burn it on purpose? And see, I was thinking that to myself. It almost looked like Gresham was pushing the hand towards the rope. And now right back into the center of the ring with the cross face. So Gresham is sticking with his offensive game plan. Oh, and Saban rolls oh, out on cover. Two. Cover! Only one shoulder was down there for Saban. Danger for Gresham. Oh! Stops on the foot. Look at that nice trap. And here we go. Octopus! He's got the octopus! He's locked in! Close to the center of the He's ring. He's locked in! Could this be it for Saban tonight at Hard to Kill? And that shoulder hanging on by Sinu, that ball and socket joint. You see it right there. Great shot by the great camera crew at Impact. And now Gresham doing everything he can. And now Saban has got to be thinking about going for a second rope break oh. in a matter of seconds. You know, and this is called the octopus because it's eight points of pressure on the body. It hurts everywhere. Oh. Now, hammer fist. Now he might be able to knock out Saban here. Those are unprotected. And this is how he finished off Dragon Lee and in Saban, Ring of Honor. Saban defenseless, but oh, somehow. Cradle shock, he's trying to cradle shock. Oh, he's going to trap his legs. If he gets his legs, can he go? Can he go? Got it! Cradle shock by Saban. Now Saban is reaching for Gresham. Here's the cover. Two. No! Three, got it. Wait a minute. What? Yeah, 
everybody at the point. And, and, and Brian Hebner, thank goodness, has that seen his rope break, break number two. Rope break number two. Jonathan, two. Jonathan Gresham just dodged a bullet. <laughs> Brian Hebner doing the right thing. He was looking at the shoulders on the pinfall. Watch this one more time, this sequence. The and cradle shock, boom. And you see right there, Jonathan Gresham creating space, rolling towards the rope. Foot is under the rope. You can clearly see it. Saban could not see the foot get under the rope, so obviously couldn't do anything about it. The official was in the right position, but made the right call to yes. keep this match going. And this is now going to turn into who can deliver the strongest strikes, hit the target the sharpest oh. for Saban. He's targeting the jaw right now, but Gresham has a bullseye. Just locked in on that elbow and shoulder. The left arm of Saban's got to be useless. It's falling limp right now. You can see these are straight forearms oh. into that arm. Oh, and a headbutt by Saban. A close fist not permitted, but headbutts and forearms certainly are. Both men staggering now back to their feet. The Ring of Honor World Championship on the line. Saban for a second there looked like he was grabbing for a rope break. Instead goes back to the center to meet Gresham. Oh, knife edge chops exchange from both. And this is the heart and the gas tank of both men. Two of the most finely conditioned athletes in the world. Emptying it out here in Dallas. Oh, wow. And it seems like they're powering each other up. Gresham is hitting right on the collarbone, sending shockwaves down that injured left arm of Chris Saban. But what's happening right now is the more these shots go, the more the adrenaline surges in the body. And you almost don't feel them, and you just want to keep intensifying your blow. and Saban. You can see the wounds of war here for Chris Saban. D'Lo, Tom, I want to thank you very much for having me in the booth here tonight. It's been my pleasure. On behalf of Ring of Honor, we want to thank you for helping the Ring of Honor flame. Take a look at this. Lamahi Straw cradled and rolled through, stepped through Lamahi Straw, and then Grisham with the bridge locking Saban down. Wow. Nowhere to go once he hit that bridge there. No, you're locked in. And look, the code of honor handshake while well, the entire factory standing up showing respect for what we just saw there. For the first time ever, the Ring of Honor world title has been defended inside an Impact Wrestling ring. Congratulations to Jonathan Gresham. It's been a night of firsts because earlier this evening, the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match was won by Tasha Steeles, who's got plenty to celebrate. Tasha Steele, first of all, congratulations on making history and winning the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match, which guarantees you an opportunity at the Knockouts World Championship. Oh, Gia, you damn right. I said it before and I say it again. It ain't history if there is no flavor in it. And tonight, 
beaten, bruised. That's exactly what I did. I created history, the culture queen, La Boricua, badass, the flavor gang leader, and now the history maker. And tonight, whether it's Deanna Perrazzo, whether it's Mickey James, you have a date on the wrong side of the street with Tasha Steeles. Oh, His arm is giving out. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. He comes, he comes. Knock out, did it, just did it. Knock out, did it, just did it. Soak it in, young man, soak it in. What the, what, what? Damn you, move. Damn you, move. No, damn you, move. He called the shot. My wife, my son, and one hair on their heads was touched, and that man called the match. Don't prove him right with the fact that your emotions are running unchecked. Stay focused. Stay focused, and you're gonna get where you're supposed to be. I'm angry, but, but I'm focused. And one way or another, I will have that Impact World Championship again. Jonah has shown up here in Impact Wrestling, and he's not done yet. He's gonna flush everybody! Oh my goodness! Jonah making his impact felt here in Impact Wrestling. Josh Alexander, at Turning Point, I popped you in the back of the head. And you could have stayed down, and you could have earned the respect of the top dog. But instead, you got back up. And now, instead of getting my respect, I'm gonna beat you and beat you into you do respect the top dog and hard to kill. Josh, you call yourself the walking weapon? Well, you were looking at mass destruction. It is one of the most personal rivalries you will see play out tonight at Hard to Kill. The walking weapon faces mass destruction. Josh Alexander one-on-one -on -one with Jonah. It happens now. If only it were that simple. Right, Jonah is a monster. I have seen what this man can do firsthand. I have seen his good side. I have seen what his bad side can be here in Impact Wrestling. Jonah doesn't care what Josh Alexander wants, but he will have to contend with Alexander's emotion. Yes, and that's the hard part, but what Jonah wants right now is to get Josh Alexander out of the way, because Jonah, you know, has got to have his eyes set on the Impact World Championship. First things first. Canada, the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. You want to talk about intensity. You want to talk about focus. Look at the eyes of Josh Alexander right now. He's staring a whole new Jonah, and he's going to come right in here and take care of business. I didn't 
can see Alexander, he already wants to get to Jonah. This is an issue that Scott D. Moore has tried to address with Josh Alexander, trying to tell him to keep his emotions in check. We've seen how Alexander has just brutalized his competition recently on Impact Wrestling, but Jonah did get the better of Alexander this past Thursday on Access TV. Yes, he did. He laid him out, and I guarantee you those ribs are still hurting right now with Josh Alexander. He's not showing it, but I guarantee you underneath, He's in some serious pain. Jonah putting Alexander through a table yes. with a tsunami. Oh, and a kick right to the face by Alexander. And did not phase Jonah one bit. He didn't do that in the back of the head. He did it right to his face. And now here comes Alexander trying to back the 345-pounder into the corner. And, and don't be fooled by 345. He moves like he's 245, but hits like he's 545. Alexander, this early storm, this early flurry, can it last? That's it right now, and we're going to talk about it. He's running on emotions right now. He is full on just being emotional here. Almost emotionless as he stopped Alexander. Has the power to do so, and that does not take Jonah off his feet. Second rope drop. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, 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 sent on, and Alexander avoided disaster. Well, he needed to move out of the way, because if that would have hit, that, that would have just okay, going rocked him. Going for the ankle, has Alex out to the floor. Had Jonah down early, went immediately thinking about the ankle lock. That was very smart by Alexander, but he paid for it. Yeah, but you gotta remember, Al Josh Alexander is a smart man. He's going to try to weaken the base of Jonah. Oh, wow! Right here in front of us, you can, I can almost feel that impact of that chop. Count of four from the official. Jonah tosses Alexander back inside. This is about making a statement by Jonah, going after a man like Josh Alexander, who's gained world-renowned fame recently here as a part of the Impact roster. One of the best wrestlers alive. Jonah can make his statement that he is the top dog at Alexander's expense. Oh, wait a minute, look at the leg. Oh, the leg's trapped in there, look at this. That, it, do you see the way the leg was trapped in there between ropes? That could be damage to the knee and to the ankle. And now Josh going right after the ankle. Alexander to the left ankle. Jonah's in trouble. Oh, Alexander with a heavy cross body. Air cannon right to the spine. And now Josh Alexander. But how much did that take out of Alexander? That cross body going ribs first into Jonah. This is where the emotion, the adrenaline, is fueling Alexander. If he was maybe using better judgment, do you know, would he go for that type of offense? No, he wouldn't, but you see, it's it's tactics like this showing his one we do anything is the reason why Josh Alexander was ranked in Sports Illustrated top 10 wrestlers of 2021. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, oh ribs first into the edge of the ring. And, and that, that's right on those, those bruised ribs there, and that's the first time they've been exposed to some damage, and that could take the win right out. Watch this crossbody one more time. Again, accomplished a lot here against Jonah, but Alexander, boom, the ribs right into the back. You could see Alexander immediately favor the ribs. That's where he's sacrificing part of himself to, to inflict damage, but you saw the, the intensity and the speed that Josh Alexander hit Jonah with. Now, there's a smile on Jonah's face, D'Lo, and when a big man gets that type of look in their eye, it's terrifying. Yeah, that's not a good look to have if you're on the other side of that look. And granted, Jonah is still favoring the left ankle. The damage was done. Oh, getting tied up in the ropes. Alexander did his best to capitalize, but it was brief. Yeah, and, and Jonah is built and hits like a wrecking ball. Oh now, God. look at the strength of Jonah. Oh, now the top turnbuckle ribs first. And Jonah just wipes his hands like he took out the garbage. Oh! Oh my God, this is just beast. And now, Jonah putting Josh Alexander up on his shoulders. What's he gonna do?
Line. Shota is launching Alexander. Alexander is 235 pounds officially. Can you imagine launching a man that size? Now a cover by Jonah, pressing on the ribs as he went for the cover. Yeah, that wasn't a, a pin attempt to win. That was a pin attempt to inflict damage, making Josh Alexander kick out, exert energy while putting force on those bruised ribs. You've inevitably had bruised ribs at some point in your career. How in the world do you move forward after Look, Jonah does something like this to you? Jonah just threw Josh Alexander. He's a grown man and threw him like he was nothing. And now, a version of a backbreaker here. Just a version of the torture rack, basically, here is pressing down on the midsection of Alexander. And now, right now, Josh Alexander's being bent in two different ways, being pulled down. This, that was the best way to get out. Oh, he's going for a backslide. Thinking about a backslide, trying to get the 345-pounder off his feet. No. Oh, Jonah switching the grip now. Not so difficult for Jonah, but Alexander trying to pick the leg. Oh, to the ankle. Oh. To the ankle. He's got the ankle pick. Oh, he's setting up. Oh, wait, can he get him up for the, get, for the C4 spike? No, no, no. Hey, you can definitely see the rib ribs were hurting and that he could. Oh, oh, over the top rope. Ribs first into the top rope. The ribs were bothering oh. Alexander. And they're going to be hurting even more now. Can Jonah finish this match? There's the cover. Alexander is still in it. The one thing you know about Josh Alexander, he will not give up. He will keep coming. He will keep fighting. The thing that Jonas said is that if Alexander had stayed down, when he has attacked him at turning point, is that Jonah would have respected oh. Alexander for doing so. That is his top dog mentality. Yeah, well, the one thing Josh Alexander is not going to do is stay down. Oh, wow. I literally glanced up and took a look into the eyes of, of Josh Alexander when he was hit by that forearm, and his eyes closed. Looking for a gut wrench, and again, right back up into a torture rack. You see Josh Alexander is in pain. He's bent over backwards. Human body is not meant to be bent like and that. This shake that's being applied, not doing any favors to Alexander. Oh. It's an elbow right across the bridge of the nose. Doing anything he can just to get away. Alexander, how much does he have? Just firing off strikes now. Oh, going for another, going for another. Oh, oh no, no. Oh! Every time Alexander wants to go in close, and that is his pedigree, Jonah's making him pay for it. But, it, but Josh Alexander keeps trying to it go, he keeps trying to go forward. Oh, he's going backwards it, now. Is this just a bad matchup for Alexander? It, it, it's starting to feel that way. It doesn't matter. Oh, no, no. There you go. Able to use the ego of Jonah against him, gets to the left leg. Did Josh Alexander sacrifice himself and take that form being position to kick out the ankle? It very well be the case. Alexander went for the clothesline, trying to send Jonah clean out of the ring. Uh oh, creating momentum, getting space. Oh, oh no! Jonah. Jonah's too big, too strong. And now Jonah still hung up, but absorbing punishment. And, and Josh Alexander, you can see the confusion on his face. Dagana! This time Jonah goes to the outside, and the gigantic frame landed on the injured ankle. And that is all of Jonah's weight coming down on that injured ankle. Alexander fighting through the pain just to deliver these clotheslines, and then this strength here. Watch Look this. Look at this right here. You see Josh oh. Alexander muscling through, but did you see that? Jonah's ankle came down, and that's all 350 pounds coming down on that ankle. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Jonah's out in the crowd here at the factory in Dallas, Texas. So is Alexander. This is what a front row scene at Impact Wrestling will get you. Welcome to the party. Here we go. Oh, right between the eyes. Jonah, oh, a huge clothesline. Clothesline, Josh Alexander, back in over the security rails. Oh, straight right hand. 
What's Josh Alexander thinking? What's he? No. No. What? No. 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 Josh. Josh. Josh Alexander fly. And one more look. Look at this angle. The exploring the space here in the impact zone. Yeah, the intensity of that strike. Josh Alexander sacrificing everything. Look at the ref. What's his count up to? I can see it. Count of three. three between Jonah and Alexander. Alexander is rolled inside the ring. Jonah's got a long ways to go. And he's hurting. Look at the barricade. One of those, look at those steel beams is broken. Count of six. Jonah trying to climb back inside. Count of seven. Can he make it in? Can, Can he, he make, make it? Can with all the damage done? Count of eight. No, he's, he's getting further away from the ring. Count of nine. nine. Jonah back inside the ring. The match continues. Wow. What intensity right here. Josh Alexander challenging the, the impact zone here, challenging the faithful to come along for this ride with him. Setting up for the C4 spike, can he get it hooked? That's a big man. Uh-oh. Oh, and the midsection crashing to the canvas. And now for the first time, Jonah looks rocked in this match for the first time. Jonah's absorbed a ton in the knee right to the back of the Smart by Alexander, here's the cover, and a power out. Big kick out there. Very smart offense there by Alexander. Now he's got to capitalize, but he's got Jonah down. And, and this is where you want to be. This is where you want Jonah to be at. I don't care how big you are, how strong you are, but laying flat on the back, you have no advantage. Oh, and Jonah. Jonah trying to prevent any sort of top rope offense. And I believe the post went into the ribs of Alexander. Yeah, and right now you can see the pain on Josh Alexander's face. I mean, how much more this can Alexander take? I mean, he's got to think about long-term injury at this point. And I don't think... Josh Alexander doesn't think that way. He thinks about the here and now. And what has he got to do to win tonight? Jonah's teetering here. Oh! Headbutt right to those ribs. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Flex off the top rope. That is a lot of body weight coming down. Look at this, the ring shook. That was measured on the Richter scale. The crowd here in Dallas showing their respect for these two warriors. Count of seven, both men after the count of 10 to get back to their feet. Count of eight between Jonah and Josh Alexander. Count of nine, Alexander's up, Jonah is up to a foot. The referee's gonna allow this to continue. And now, just these heavy hands being exchanged. Oh, oh God, you hear the crack. You see sweat flying. Oh! And palm strike. Oh! Oh! They're going at it here in Texas. Look at these shots. Oh! Uh oh! Jonah's not done. Powerball. Trying to stack him up. Here's the cover. Alexander somehow found a way to kick out. Witnessing here right now. Look at this clothesline inside out. Josh Alexander 360, but Josh Alexander still standing. And out straight headbutts oh. from the top dog. Oh! And keeping Alexander close by the headgear. 
Pulls him into position. Suplex. Brain Buster! That's it. That has got to be it. Covered by Jonah. Alexander won't quit. I thought I took a glance and blow of this. I believe Josh Alexander has been busted open by those headbutts. Yes, there we go. Look at this. He is busted open from those headbutts from, from Jonah. Watch this one more time. Jonah with some extra force here on the Brain Buster. Somehow, Josh Alexander is still in this match, but how much longer? Yeah, right now, you can see his, his power is, is, is dwindling right now. It, it, looks like, it looks like Jonah's going to the top to, 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 to put an exclamation point to the end of this sentence. Alexander is in a bad way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The walking weapon is back up. Okay. to break before the count of five or we would have been disqualified. And now Jonah's trapped in a bad place. Oh, and another headbutt. Oh, Jonah's up. Jonah's trying to get his bearings. He's going to the top. Good God, no. No way. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. And a big forearm by Alexander. Jonah takes down. Jonah! Oh, combo, he's going. Can he hook the No door? freaking way! No, no, no! Now with damage ribs. Powerball! Oh, my God, he pulled it off! Alexander, the cover! Kick out by Jonah! And now angle lock! Into the angle! Jonah's got him! Jonah's trapped in the center of the ring! Josh Alexander's got the angle lock in the middle of the ring! There's a look of panic on Jonah's face right now. Oh, Jonah did enough to keep Alexander away, but now right to the face. Look at Alexander oh, go. Wow. He's got to calm down. He's got to get his emotions in check. He could have gotten disqualified. No, back, back to the ankle. Right back in. He locked in deep, sitting in. Chin on the ankle, pushing even harder. Jonah's got nowhere to go. Oh. Almost going to tap. The, Jonah, the ankle lock in deep. And you see Josh is pulling Jonah back out. There it is. Jonah's first impact pay-per-view match. He falls to Josh Alexander in a brutal matchup. We have got to take you back to this huge move earlier on in the match. And look, and look at this exchange here. But Jonah goes for the moonsault here, misses at the rolling elbow. Then the release German. Oh. What combination offense right now? And then the power bomb into the ankle lock. Jonah tried to endure as long as he could, but it was Josh Alexander showing the will to continue on. Look right here, the intensity. Josh Alexander was pushing away from Jonah, locking the ankle in even deeper. And look at Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander puts down Jonah. Did he just clear his path back for the Impact World title? I would think so. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guests at this time, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, Eddie Edwards, Rhino, and Heath. <sighs> gentlemen, in The time has come. Yeah. Dallas, Texas, it's time for Hardcore War! Yeah, baby! Woo! I look at this team, I look at these men beside me, I look at this team that we've assembled, and I have zero doubts, zero doubts that each and every one of us will do whatever it takes. We are willing to die out there tonight if it means winning this match. And you know what, Gia? I think it's time to introduce Kenny. Woo! to Dallas, Texas. Yeah, yes, 
indeed it is time to introduce Kenny to Dallas, Texas, and I got four of the most low down hardcore suckers ready to get it tonight. And baby, this is hard to kill. And the team that we got standing right before you, we are ready to get hardcore. Tell them, Willie. No more running, no more sneak attacks. We right here in Dallas, Texas. This hard to kill. We in the shit tonight, boys. Eric Young, Eric Young. I don't care how many people I have to go through tonight. See, Eric, you wanted to screw with my head for over six months. Tonight, I'm gonna twist your head off, kick it down the street, twist it back on, just so I can reach down your throat, pull out your intestines, and choke you with them. See, Eric Young, usually I say I'm gonna rip you in half with a gore, but tonight, Eric Young, I'm gonna make you bleed. The design has always involved you. The design involves you now and forever. And now the design, it may have to change. Anything goes in the street fight, here's Joe Dory. Just like that, Rhino's got some friends too. Rich Swan, Willie Mack, battle lines have been drawn. If you want to kid yourself and think you're one step ahead of us with your friends Heath, Willie, and Rich, I have a design for that. What are the Good Brothers doing here? When BBD came to us with a plan to take out two of the top tag teams here at Impact, we thought, why not? The match is over. Eddie Edwards with Kenny. Eddie oh. never met a fight he didn't like. Call it an unholy alliance. Call it whatever you want. Good Brothers, following by design. You think you got it all set. You think you got it all figured out, don't you? Oh, look at this. And now, Doc, continuing the assault here. We've been in the ring with Violet by design before. Everything you see legal and encouraged. These men are going to destroy themselves. They are going to tear themselves apart. And we couldn't think of a more vicious trio to share the ring with at Hardcore War. Hardcore War is before us. You know what they say, war is hell. Tonight, this is not just gonna be a match. Tonight, this is personal. Tonight, this is hardcore war. And this one is gonna be brutal. And it's coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, this are the rules for hardcore war. Two men start alone for three minutes every 90 seconds. A new man enters from alternating teams. The match cannot end until the final man has entered. After all 10 men have entered the match, the match is won by pinfall or submission, and there are no disqualifications. send out second, and you send out the order in which you think you can get the biggest and best advantage. So now to be curious to see which members come out next. And it's a guessing game, as you know superstars extraordinarily well being in the locker room with them, but at the same time, you don't know what the World Violent by Design is gonna do from one day to the next. No, and, and you know that a guy like Eric Young has been game planning this forever. He's got a plan, and now let's see it play out in front of us. The real question is, Will this alliance, quote unquote, this, I don't know, partnership between Violet by Design and the Good Brothers last? Yeah, that's the thing. They have the ability to implode at any second. Let's keep our eye on that. Eric Young has described it as a business deal, a design. From Baltimore, Maryland, Rich Swan! 
first person I saw today was Rich Swan. Yeah. Former Impact World Champion. And man, the smile on my face and the smile on Rich's face when we got to see each other. I was so happy. Swan coming to the ring with his steel chair. He's got an axe to grind for the BBD. Yes, he does, and he's going to want to take it out. And to me, this is a start smart strategy here. Put speed on speed to start this off with, and let's see if you can take the advantage. Remember, it was a number of weeks ago that Violet by Design clashed with Willie Mack and Rich Swan. It was the beatdown after the fact that really sparked this hardcore war. And that ratcheted up the intensity and made this thing personal. And right here, both men, trash can in hand, steel chair in hand. We're getting ready to start this. It's hardcore war in Dallas. Oh, oh, and a steel chair right to the rim by Rich Swan to start it off. Remember, oh, these two men will be alone for three minutes and then a new competitor will enter the match every 90 seconds. And look at Swan go. And, and Swan is trying to get the early advantage here. Count outs, no disqualification. After all 10 men have entered the match, the match is won by pinfall or submission. And, and, and here we go. Swan is trying to control the early pacing here. really burst on the scene as a tag team and have tried to make some strides, but oh. Violent by Design is trying to prevent that. Right now, Swan is just trying to give his team an early lead, so yeah, to speak. And that's what you want to do. Remember, this is this is not a sprint. It is a marathon. So yes, an early lead can evaporate pretty quickly. Now Swan wedging that chair in between ropes two and, and three there. Got it in there. Swan going to run Diener's head right into it. Uh, uh, Diener, Diener grabbing right at the face. No disqualification. He went right at the eyes. Completely illegal and hardcore war. Oh, so is that. Yes. Trash can right across the back, and now the trash can is bent. Oh! That connected. What a spin kick to Diener. Now Swan from the middle rope. Oh, oh! One for the 450. Oh! Head first into the steel chair. And Swan, that that takes the life right out of you right there. Now Dina waving the BBD flag. One minute until our next entrant here at Hardcore War. And again, the question is, who's next out? BBD! get the advantage. Oh, oh, spinning heel kick right to the chin. Swan keeps his balance. And then some. Oh, it went for the cutter, but no. Oh, and now using the flagpole. Oh, side rush and leg sweep with the assist. And that flag, that pole right there was across the throat in the Russian leg sweep. That is intensity on the on the neck. Entirely legal. And now Diener's out here scrounging around for God knows what. He grabs a steel chair. And now Diener. This man is an absolute vulture. Yes. He's more of a jackal. Uh oh. Here we go. You see the clock up there. Eight, seven. Swan. Oh, right into the steel chair. Who's in next? Is he carrying a driver? He's got the big club. I didn't know Carl golfed. I wonder what his handicap is. I think somebody might be about to be that in a minute. Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows, they came together with a plan. An offer from Eric Young and Violet by Design to take out competition in the tag team ranks. Four. And now Swan taking the early advantage there. And now Swan has got the club. And Rich Swan's about to play uh, the front nine. Oh! I think he got a hole in one. And it's time to retire to the clubhouse. Oh, beautiful. Great perfect swing there. 
Quick ball. Oh, wait a minute. Now Dino trying to help out. A two-on-one advantage here for this 90-second interval for... Oh! Step up cutter on the chair. For VBD and the Good Brothers, it certainly doesn't feel like an advantage. Hold on. Oh! And the tag team title right to the face by Anderson. Those championships are beautiful, but they're also weapons. Anderson's golf balls are all messed up, but still he's going to wield a steel chair. Oh! Straight chair shot to the unprotected side of Rich Swan. And now violent by design and the Good Brothers working together. Five seconds until Swan gets some backup and he needs it. Oh, Chocolate Thunder's in the house! The next entry will be back! Is that an axe handle? Uh, yeah! When did this become Anchorman 2? I don't know, but he's swinging the axe handle like he's Paul Bunyan. Oh! Willie Mack and Rich Swan, they felt the oh! brunt of what the Good Brothers and Violent by Design tried to enact here in Impact Wrestling, and now they're looking to, looking to extinguish it. Steel. Oh, trash can right across the back. And you saw Willie almost calling us something out of a playbook there. Oh! Buzzsaw kicked there from Swan. Is, is, is that the front? Shut the front door! Shut the front door! I heard that in like six years. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and uh oh. And, and Diener looks like he's caught in no man's land. Oh, wait a minute, there's Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson in to help out his teammate. Temporary alliance between BBD and Good Brothers tonight. Carl Anderson out to the floor. Oh, and now Willie Mack tied up with Diener. Inverted atomic drop. Oh! Team 3D will be proud! What an homage to a great tag team right there. Brother Devon. Brother Ray. Here we go. Two Hall of Famers, excuse me. Two Hall of Famers, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, well, you know who this is. Your next entrant, Doc Kiddo. The big LG. And Doc isn't walking with any swagger. Doc is walking with pace, because Doc is walking to take care of some business. And granted, Dieter's all messed up, but it is, it, it is a three-on-two advantage on paper for the Good Brothers and Violent by Design. Oh, and, Lord. And right now is where you need to make end roads. You need to take the advantage while you have the, the numerical advantage. And, and Dieter is now using the door that he went through. That's a weapon on Swan. And, and Look, the ring is filling with plunder. The ring is filling with bodies. And remember, you have to get all ten competitors in the match in order for the match to end via pinfall or submission. We yeah. have ways to go. Right, right now, this is punishment for the sake of punishment. I, I think I really, really like it back wrestling. This is fun. seen anything yet. Go drink it with the guys, see what happens. Oh, Lord, no. Oh, right off the head of Swan. And Swan is out of it. His eyes are crossed right now. And we are just seconds away from another competitor making their way down to the ring. Some help for Mac and Swan in two seconds. It's the heartbeat of Impact Wrestling.
too, if I ran the bars like 10 feet away. Eddie Edwards having little libations, turning this crowd on its ear. This is awesome. Oh, and Willie Mack just in court going to Doc Gallows. Remember, there's no count outs, no disqualifications. We've got six competitors in the match at this point. Still waiting on the full 10. And then, only then, the match still has to end the pinfall or submission in the ring. Oh, wow. It's hard to keep your eye on all the action here, and there's a table. There's a table. There's a table. And or we might as well get a table. I'm waiting for the kitchen sink. Where's that at? <laughs> okay, here we go. We're seconds away as Eddie Edwards sets up the table here. About seven seconds now until Violent by Design gets another member involved. A machine gun from behind there on Edwards. Always the leader of PVD. The mastermind. The maniacal Eric Young with two trash can lands. Longtime rivals Edwards and Young reigniting their rivalry tonight. He played the symbols with Eddie's head. Eric Young once took the Impact World Championship from Eddie Edwards. Yeah, there's a long history here between these two. And frankly, who in Impact Wrestling hasn't felt the wrath of Violent by Design. Look, look at the intensity. Eric Young is so focused on, oh, oh God, on Eddie Edwards right now. And Doc Gallows just, Gallows just brained Mac with a chair. Yes. Oh, wow. This match is still ongoing. Oh, and Dana is biting Edwards. It's entirely legal. And look. In, in, in the foreground, there's a bike going on. In the background, there's an eye gouge going on. There's so much happening here. I realize Anderson was an ophthalmologist. Oh, God. Rich Swan is messed up. Everyone in this match is messed up. Eddie Edwards is in the wolves' den right now. Look at this. Oh, my God. Is that a fork? And now there's that driver again. We didn't get the kitchen sink, but we got cutlery, and Eddie Edwards is trying to get Diener off of him. We're getting closer to the kitchen sink. Remember, the tap out didn't mean anything there because, oh, you got to get all 10 men in the ring. Here we go. In order to get a decision. Five more seconds until Swan, Mac, and Edwards get some help. Teeth. Heath Power walking out. Oh, oh my God, Powder! He just had teeth. Oh, Carl Anderson! Oh what my is God! That? Is that a pipe? A steel pipe! I knew he had kids. I didn't know he was a plumber too. Oh! Now oh. look at Heath go. Oh! Heath and Rhino came to aid Rich Swan and Willie Mack at first when they were assaulted by maybe D and the Good Brothers. Uh, I'm sorry, did you see the carnage in that wide shot? Bodies everywhere, look at this! Oh! Oh my god. My goodness. The best job on the planet. Well, as long as we don't have to pay the rent. Yeah, as long as I'm not in there, I'm good. What's Willie doing? Heath is handing Willie the trash can. And Willie's on the top row. What the hell? Oh! Crashing and burning is Willie Mac. Nobody home with that, that moonsault assisted with the trash can, and Willie's got to be hurt. Right to the side of us. This is ridiculous. We gotta back out and bail out ourselves. Heath and Gallows, Diener and Edwards. I mean, we are right in the line of fire. Diener's biting people like he's Tyson. This is absolute madness. Four more seconds, and now it's time for the monster. Next is Jude Doreen. At 
This is violent by design. Heavy. This is their heavy hitter. This is their home run slugger. And D'Lo, notice Joe Torrey, he doesn't have a weapon. He is the weapon. And he put down Eddie Edwards on a suicide dive there. Here comes Heath. Look at this. Oh! Torrey just taking oh. control of everyone. The value of having Gallows and Dory on the same team. These two were tag team partners recently on Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Look at the uh, look of intensity. Uh oh. Oh, look at this. And Dory puts down both Mac and Swan. Double power bomb there. And Dory is just fired up. Look at him. Wild eye look. Face of Joe Dory. Now violent by design. And the Good Brothers are at full strength. And, and, and what an advantage provided by design for the Good Brothers here. Oh! Beer bottle. This is absolute madness. And now a steel chain. Eddie Edwards is busted open, and Eric Young is going after the wound. My goodness, this is absolute carnage in the ring right now. And yes, Eddie Edwards is clearly busted open, man. Five more seconds. Bring on the war machine. said he was going to pop Eric Young's head off tonight. They're hard to kill. Now, Gallows into the steps, into the, into, the, into the ring post there. Oh, and now Eric Young from behind, the man who has tried to destroy the mind of Rhino for months. Oh, get you some, Rhino. Every chance Rhino can get, he wants to put the specter of Eric Young behind him. It seems to be, however, D-Lo, this never-ending rivalry. Yes, it's a never-ending rivalry, but right now it looks like Rhino is trying to try to find a way to end this. Now remember, all ten men have officially entered the match, which means Hardcore War can end now via pinfall or submission. Every competitor's got to be on high alert. Yeah, this is when it means the most now. Everyone's in, so this match can end in a cross. Oh! What a right hand to the head of Eric Young. Oh, God, look at look at Heath. Heath is busted open, too. I don't know who isn't at this point. And, and, and I'm just glancing around, and this. Look at Eddie. This is brutal. Oh my God, look at Gallo's face. And you see the, the battle lines have been drawn right here. Look at this. All 10 men back up to their feet and inside the ring. taking out everything in his path. Inside the ring, it's Eddie Edwards and Eric Young. Oh, God, look at the laceration across the forehead. Yeah, that's from that, that's from that right hand with that, with that, ch that chain on it, that right of delivery. Oh! Oh! Oh, straight shots! Oh, my goodness! Neither man is backing down. Wild eye hitting 
in his, in, in a wild look in his eye right now. With Kenny in hand, oh. right across the head. Oh, now to Doran. And Edwards is splintering Kenny. Kenny is, is broken. That's how hard Kenny is. Kenny is being used against by, by design and the Good Brothers. It is absolute carnage at ringside. is going back after Eric Young. Remember, this match still has to end via pinfall or submission in the ring. Edwards isn't done. Look at what he's trying to set up here with Eric Young. Now he's in a bad spot. Eric Young setting looks like, oh, God. Could oh, be a my pile God. driver, oh, my pile God. driver. Eric Young has got Eddie Edwards up here. Back inside the ring, Rich Swan has somehow fell Joe Dory. Yeah, Rich Swan. Oh, and now Swan on the Young. That was a 450 off the apron to the floor, sacrificing his body for the greater good. Oh. Now, what's Willie Mack doing? What more could you possibly need? That, that answer. Well, I don't know why I asked. You have to ask a question, you've got an answer. Stupid questions and stupid answers. Oh my god. Why not? Let's go Bob Warren. Somewhere Why not? Abyss is smiling. <laughs> what these men have been willing to do to each other just to take someone out, potentially on their path to tag team title glory, to get back at vendettas, it's been astonishing. It, it's to, to see what Kim body is capable of going through. Oh, oh baby, Swan launched himself at Dory. Oh! Using Swan as a weapon. What the hell?
security at? Willie Mack, Willie Mack is trying to fight back and protect his partners. I'm at a loss. Oh, my. That is not who I think it is. BCO is here! BCO! Is this a full-on invasion? I'm at a loss for words. What, what is going on? Oh, Willie Mack's in it. They're going to spike pile driver Willie Mack. Oh, no! That move is literally banned in 12 states. Ring of Honor is trying to make some kind of statement here. Taven's got Swan defenseless. Swan's defenseless. Where the hell's PCO going? Oh my god! And Mike Bennett goes. He is right behind. What? the same time that everybody else did. So you didn't know about this at all? No, but I think it's time that I call Baltimore and find out what the hell is going on. Call Baltimore! Joe Cobb, what the hell? I, I don't know what we just saw there. We have the first ever Ring of Honor World title match here at Impact earlier on tonight, but yes. did that open the doors? Was this sanctioned by Ring of Honor, or is this just a rogue group? Well, given by the reaction of Scott Demore, Scott has knows nothing about this, and he's going to get to the bottom of it, I guarantee you, but... But, right, obviously, wow. We're, we're going to get back to the scheduled card here tonight. Uh, at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view here in Dallas, Texas, we are going to try and get more information as, as the week goes by and try and find out what in the world just happened. But right now, here in Dallas, we are ready for the Impact World Championship match. It is a triple threat. Moose defends against W. Morrissey and Matt Cardona. What do you see? Is a glass half filled or half spilled? What do you see when you look at me? I'm the greatest champion in all of professional wrestling. What do you see? What do you see when you look at me? You may see me as a villain, a monster, a rising hero, scaling the last tiny peak of the mightiest of summits. Or am I already there? What do you see? You 
see things through the prism of your own perspective. It doesn't concern me what you think of me, how you view me. What matters is how I see myself. I am an athletic freak of nature, a titan in a world of giants. I am a wrestling god. Do you really want to have a wrestling match with the wrestling god, the wrestling god? I've dreamt of being a world champion. I am a world champion, and I've always been a world champion. At Hard to Kill, we're going to have a triple threat match for the Impact World Championship. No more trash talking. Sign the damn contract. I am the champion the world wants to see. Chelsea, what happens at Hard to Kill once I beat him? The greatest champion in all of professional wrestling. Do you stay loyal and stay with him, or do you leave like the whore you are? So what do you see when you look at me? It doesn't get any bigger than this in Impact Wrestling. For the World's Championship in a triple threat, Matt Cardona takes on W. Morrissey, takes on the Impact World's Champion, Moose. Let's get it on. W. Morrissey has been quoted as saying that he came last year to Impact Wrestling not having a single friend, fan, or supporter. When I hit rock bottom, I did it alone, said Morrissey. I don't need anybody, and I will be standing as the Impact World Champion alone when this is all said and done. And just to paraphrase that, W. Morrissey says, I walk alone, and when I reign as champion, I'm gonna do it alone. I don't doubt this man is going to be a world champ. The question is, can he pull it off tonight? Velo, I saw the rise and the fall of W. Morrissey, but this evolution over the last year for Morrissey here with an Impact Wrestling, this is what we all knew he could be, a world champion, a titan. Look at this man. Yeah, this is what he was destined to be, and he's finally the competitor. He's finally the wrestler. He's finally the talent that he's always strived to be. Said, this is how I'm spending my honeymoon. Recently married to Chelsea Green, of course. But Matt Cardona, is he too emotional because of what has happened between Moose himself and his wife? And that's a good question. And right now, maybe use that emotion to fuel you. But the one thing you know about Matt Cardona, he's been waiting a long time for this opportunity. He's been waiting a long time to challenge for a world championship. The question is, is tonight his night? Here's the thing. Last month in a tag team match, he been the Impact World Champion Moose. That is what Scott DeMore challenged him to do. And now he must go through not only Moose, but also Morrissey. Can Cardona keep his emotions in check in this matchup?
live life at the intersection of pride and profit. Moose left his pride behind a long time ago. He will lie, hide, manipulate, and deceive to protect himself, and more importantly, his championship reign. Everything you just listed is an attribute Moose. Moose does not care about. The only thing he cares about is leaving hard to kill as Impact World's champion. We take you now to the Tale of the Tape, presented by The Free Fall in theaters and streaming January 14th. As you can see, these are three of the biggest and heaviest hitters that Impact Wrestling has to offer. No champion's advantage tonight. First man to gain pinfall or submission inside the ring is your Impact World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Hark to Kill continues with this three-way match for the Impact World Championship. It is scheduled for one fall. Your referee, Daniel Spencer. Introducing first challenger number one from Queens, New York City, W. Morrissey. Challenger number two from Long Island, New York. Always ready, Matt Cortona. And finally, he represents Moose Nation. He is the defending Impact World Champion. He is Moose. That's what it's all about right there, the Impact World's Championship. This May will mark 15 years since another triple threat match for this very title. The Hall of Famer Kurt Angle defeating fellow Hall of Famer Sting and the legend Christian Cage become this company's inaugural world champion. Another triple threat happening here tonight and hard to kill for the prestigious title. And Cordona's going right after Moose. That's this part of the match. Oh, and a break for the cover! For the cover and a win! Broken up pinfall attempt by Cardona. I think if Cardona wasn't there, that could have been the quickest world championship match we've ever had. You can feel the pace early here, D. Well, these are three huge men going at it. Oh. Cardona over the top. Cardona throwing it all out there, risking everything. Is this Matt Cardona's night to finally become a world champion? He's going to do everything in his power oh. to make sure that happens. Look, here Cardona's taking the early advantage, keeping both men on their heels, but no, into the barricade. My goodness, that is steel on flesh, and I don't care who you are, steel always wins. Now Moose trying to take advantage of the damage done there to Cardona. That is one thing why Moose refers to himself as a wrestling god is because he knows every twisted way to possibly win a match. And Cordona going for the oh. face but drop kick again, but no. Moose loading him up. And Moose. Oh, power bomb into the apron. And now Moose. Oh my god, come oh. on. So oh. the same thing. We are not even two minutes into this, and these guys are taking tremendous damage already. We knew this was going to be a heavy hitting affair. All three of these men looking for home runs, so to speak, early. Yeah, everyone's going for the Mike Tyson uppercut for the flash knockout to get this thing over with. Remember, no count outs, no disqualifications. Pinfall or submission inside the ring, the only way to win the championship. First man to gain pinfall or submission is the champion. W. Morrissey, dueling splashes here. W. Morrissey once in an alliance with Moose. And this time went off the post, now Moose. Oh, drop kick right to the face of Morrissey. Double knees now by Cardona. Now Cardona's in charge. Moose step up, cross body! Good enough to get Cardona down, a just freak athlete is Moose. Now Moose taking control here. Now W. Morrissey turns it around quickly. Go to hell. Go to hell! Off the top rope, here's the cover to retain the title. And a leg 
drop right across the throat. It looked like a version of radio silence yeah. there by Cardona. Yeah, Cardona was going there to, to, to stop that pin attempt. And right here you see, oh, the reboot in the corner. And now, loading up again. Another reboot. A third. Cardona circling the ring. Can he go for the fourth? Got him. Wow. Cardona's trying to take over right now. Morrissey just crushing Cardona in the corner. Morrissey happy to throw his weight around here in this bout. Now Cardona's gonna have to weather this storm. Now Cardona sitting on the top rope as W. Morrissey climbs up. Moose is underneath. Watching Morrissey and Cardona. Look at this, a powerbomb and an oh. SOS slam at the same time. The thing is, Moose can't capitalize on it, so he creates some space, heads out to the floor. Moose has made it very evident in the way that he has tried to play mind games with Matt Cardona and especially Chelsea Green. Oh, oh, how much of a threat he believes Matt Cardona to be to his world championship reign. And you, you, you definitely get a feeling that, that Moose feels Cardona can win because that's why he's reverting to those mind games. That's why he's playing these games. Oh. And that's why he's focusing the attack right squarely on Matt Cardona. And again, no count outs, no disqualification. This can go anywhere Oh, here in the factory in Dallas. Now, Going out into the crowd here. Uh, we're gonna try and get our camera crews out there to catch the action here as Moose is all over Cardona, close to the stage. What the hell is Chelsea? What's Chelsea doing out here? It looked like Moose was going for a power bomb. Absolutely right, and Chelsea trying to get any kind of advantage to help Matt get this championship around his waist. And look, Chelsea doing anything, diving off crossbody on Moose. And now back to live action, left side of your screen, Morrison oh! lying in wait for Cardona and Moose. Uh, I'm sorry. That's a man too big to be flying like that. You hear these chants right now, D'Lo, of Morrissey. That drives him absolutely crazy because of what I mentioned earlier, that W. Morrissey didn't have one fan when he came here to Impact Wrestling, and now he hears all this from the Impact Zone. It just makes him more incensed. And he takes it out on his opponents. You watch him do it every time. Oh. Big 300-plus pounder, seven feet tall. Intensity in W. Morrissey's eyes, and now Cardona seems like he's about to pay the price. For as long of a path as Matt Cardona has had trying to get to the world title, imagine the path that W. Morrissey has had to undergo in his own mind to overcome and get to this point, to battle his demons and then use them to propel himself forward. And now W. Morrissey basking in the, in the boos raining down on him, and he loves it. Cardona, Cardona looked like he was down and out for a moment. Jackknife cover. Oh, to win the title and a kick out. Oh, double knees right to the face. And Morrissey out of the ring now. And that was a great opportunity for either man, especially Cardona. He realized if, if Morrissey had stayed in the ring, he could have pinned him and won the world title without Bruce being involved. Cardona exchanging forms. With Chelsea Green looking on from the corner. Cardona and Moose going at it. There's a sense of, I can 
look over at Chelsea, you can see in her eyes is worry. Oh. Forearm shiver right on the ear. Now, oh, oh. Dota come with a pump kick. Moose stepping up. Oh, and oh. Moose oh. has gone through the table. What the hell? Oh. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, from my vantage point, yes, Moose went through the table, but he ate a lot of concrete on the way down. Look at that. Watch. Moose's hip definitely he, he hit that table, but yeah, Moose's hip drove through the concrete. Moose could be severely damaged right now. Um, and, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a member of the impact zone has thrown a prosthetic leg into the ring. And W. Morrissey has got a leg! I'm without words. And, and it's all legal. It's all legal, and, and I'm, the leg just been passed back over my head. I just saw the leg back up. Now Cart. was the opportunity that Matt Cardona's been waiting for to hit radio silence to be one-on-one -on -one in the ring. Moose is, can, is 30 feet away. There's nothing he can do. The champ has effectively been eliminated. Well, now Cardona. Thinking about an unprettier, maybe? Uh-oh. Oh, and a chill slam. Choke slam for the world title. Morrissey cannot secure the win. My goodness. I don't know how Matt we're going to kick out of that, but he did. Look at this. Nearly choke slammed him out of the camera. Wow. W. Morrissey, it's like it's like W. Morrissey's a, a cat playing with a mouse right now. He's just taking his time and, and enjoying this. And is now toying with Chelsea Green. And, and, and you see Cordona's just dead weight here. Uh-oh. Matt Cordona's about to take a ride. Oh, oh no! Morrissey meets the knees in the corner. Cardona trying to create a little bit of space. He knows he's, he's got a great outside us again. The world champ cover. Yeah. Yeah. Moose. Oh, and Moose interrupted the referee's count. Moose just saved his own world title right there. Morrissey was done for it. It not been for what Moose just did. Cardona nearly won the world title. Now Cardona's gonna try to take advantage of it. And now Cardona, back to square one, dealing with Moose here. How in the world is Moose still going after going through the table at ringside? I, I, he's got something going on here, right there. No, going for the Uranagi, but no. Oh, big knee strike. Roll through. Oh, Cardona. Cardona lands on his feet. Oh, oh my God! Moose spared the ref on accident. There it is, radio silence! Moose is down in a big boot by Morrissey. Moose is put in, and Moose is gonna take a ride on the BQE! Powerbomb cover! Two, three, that one again, three! Yes, we went to the world ball. champion, but the ref Clearly a 10 count, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 count. Moose is down. A, a second referee, referee Brandon Tolls coming out and check on Daniel Spencer.
this match is still underway, even though the first referee is down. This match is still, it's still going on. It's a world title match, and it's going to continue. And still, the rules remain. No count outs, no disqualification. So Morrissey's going for a steel chair. He's trying to up the ante right now. His frustration's starting to boil over. Yeah, I mean, W. Morrissey had the world title one right there. You can see the frustration of not having a referee to count three. As I'm looking down, referee Daniel Spencer is still down. hush over the crowd right now. They are just sitting and watching. Dave Morse is going for a second trip. No! Oh, what a low blow! Moose just resorting to anything to not take another trip on the BQE, the power bomb from W. Morrissey. Oh! Moose is swinging that chair like a Louisville slugger. Thud off the gigantic oh. back of Morrison. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, look at Cardona. Cardona with a steel oh. chair right to the ribs. Now Cardona swinging the chair. He's swinging for everything he's got. Oh, and a low blow to Cardona. Once again, Moose will resort to anything. Clutching that hip. He's got damage that hip from that ball through the table earlier. What is going on? Chelsea. Chelsea is in the ring. Oh, oh, oh. Almost a nightmare revisited. Oh my god! Chelsea ducked out of the way! Cover! Right to it! Two! Got him! Cardona couldn't win the title! The second referee's inside the match. Champion, you and Nikki 
James, and all of the Impact faithful are just going to have to wait and see what my next moves are. I want my rematch, Nikki. And I want my knockout championship. And I'm gonna get it at hard to kill. Hey, Nikki James is here! And then Nikki James, the Alaprazo is going at it on the floor! Here we go, Nikki James and the Alaprazo! Now long, long block between these two! As of right now, we're reinstituting a no-contact clause. You'll get your chance to end this hard to kill. And we need a match that's gonna settle this once and for all. We're gonna have a Texas death match. In a match here that is for the knockouts, World Championship, a Texas death match going to be competed between two of the most decorated knockouts in the history of this company. And here we go. It's getting ready to come up next. Wow, I can't wait for this one. This is going to be good. For the first time in two years, Deanna Perrazzo enters an Impact Wrestling pay-per-view without her Impact Knockouts World title. And you can see just by the look on the face of Deanna, that drives her absolutely insane. Yeah, Deanna's changed everything about herself, her attitude, her appearance, her walk, her swagger. There's a new intensity because, like you said, for the first time, she's walking out in over two years not representing the knockouts as their champion. Deanna Perrazzo has been furious because of the recent news, especially regarding Mickey James, which we'll tell you about here in a moment. But tonight is about one thing, getting back the Impact Knockouts Women's World title to be paired with the Reina De Reina's title. It was announced last night that Mickey James, the reigning Impact Knockouts World Champion, is officially in WWE's Women's Royal Rumble match later this month. This is unprecedented. To my knowledge, I have never, ever known another company's world champion to walk into the Royal Rumble. If Mickey James can defend the title here tonight, man, what a moment for her and Impact Wrestling. This is the Tale of the Tape, presented by The Free Fall, in theaters and streaming, January 14th, and to your point, Nilo, it is gonna come down to this Texas death match. If Mickey James can retain her championship, then yes, she will carry it with her into the Royal Rumble match, but Deanna Perrazzo is looking to spoil that and Mickey James, quote unquote, 15 minutes of fame. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Heart to Kill main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the referee for this match will be Brian Hebner. This match is for the Impact Knockout World Championship. It is scheduled to be a Texas death match where there is no disqualification. No count out, falls count anywhere, and after each fall, the competitor has to a 10 count to reach their feet, or they will lose the match. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, the participants. First to my left, the challenger from Hackettstown, New Jersey. She is the virtuosa, Diana. And in the corner to my right, from Richmond, Virginia, she is the reigning and defending Knockouts World Champion, McKee! You 
been in a Texas death match, who do you believe this match type favors, Mickey or Deanna? Uh, I'm gonna go with Deanna because I believe Deanna's the harder hitter and she has the more dominant strikes. But don't put anything past Mickey James. She's the world, the knockouts world champion for a reason. This our main event here at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view in Dallas, Texas. Perrazzo, James, for the Impact Knockouts World Championship in a Texas death match. And, and this is two falls. There's two, there's two steps to this match. You've got to secure the pinfall, and then you've got to render your opponent so helpless they cannot stand back up before the 10 count. This is going to be a tough match. To Securing the pinfall is hard enough, but in the event that your opponent gets up before the count of 10, you've got to start all the way back to where it Yep. Like falling down a flight of stairs. And early on, this is Deanna Perazzo going for a patented Fujiwara armbar. And now James looking for a cover early and a quick cover, but Deanna Perazzo obviously fresh. But Mickey James saying, look how quickly I can pin you. Yeah, but see, the pin, it, it's just twofold. Like I said, it doesn't matter here. That's more of a mental game right there. So the match continues. Again, you must achieve a pinfall, and then the person who was pinned has to be down for a count of 10. So it's more of a mind game with these pinfall attempts. Well, it's very clear Deanna Perrazzo is far more emotional than Mickey James coming into this matchup. Perrazzo has tried to instigate things, thus the no contact laws that Scott DeMore and Gail Kim have been observing between these two. It's why Matt Raywalt is banned from getting involved in this match or else he's fired. He's fired and Deanna will lose the match, so. And see, both, both these competitors have championship pedigree. They know what it's like to, to compete at the highest level for championships. That part is not gonna intimidate them. What is is knowing you've got to get the pinfall and then have your opponent not stand back up. Hot shot! Again, going for the arm ball. Oh, Venus to Milo, Venus to Milo locked in. And an early tap out here by Mickey James. But Deanna Peraza was refusing to let go, as you can see, Mickey James. Count of two, and now a count of three is back up to her feet, so we continue on. Let's restart. Self-preservation there by Mickey James. Whoa. That is, that is Roxy, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Ring of Honor's had their fingerprints all over this pay-per-view. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get security here, because I need somebody around me. Well, hold on a second. Deanna Barrazzo, the one who instigated that, stepped right onto Ring of well, Honor this is television. This is true. Challenged Roxy for her title. Actually invited her here down to Dallas, so that's probably where Roxy's here. This is legal. It is a Texas death match. Okay. Mickey says, I see your chair, and I raise you a chair. There's a reason they call hardcore country. Okay. Yeah, says, I see your chair. Can I raise you another one? Yeah, and Brian Hebner is going to have to duck and cover. And, and, and Brian Hebner is just, just running for his life in the ring. Get the ring out of the way so these two can fight. <laughs> yes. And Perrazzo's had enough of this. Closing the gap between her and James with a thing about something else. He has to go for a table. Uh, look at Mickey James going for the baseball drop kick, but Went to the outside, trying to use the table to brace. Oh, and down goes Perrazzo. And now Mickey's got the chair in hand. It's legal, right? Unbelievable. The 
last night has been pure chaos. Absolute carnage from the word go. Oh, oh. Is, is that a wheelbarrow? You're absolutely right. Did Penzer bring that from home? Now, Mickey James trying to take over. Oh, oh, into the steel post. Tiana Perrazzo has changed the complexion of this match. I love nothing more than to derail this path ahead of Mickey James. Whether Mickey James derailed her second knockouts world title reign. Well, we got a small break in the action. Right now, Hard to Kill is trending number seven. Trending number seven right now. What an amazing accomplishment. For Impact Wrestling and all of this talent. And it's been a hell of a pay-per-view here at Hard to Kill in Dallas, Texas. A fabulous crowd here inside the factory. Shot right to the throat by Perrazzo. Now, Deanna really trying to be aggressive here. This is not the Deanna Perrazzo who was interested in getting in the ring, showing off her glitz and glam and technical wizardry. Oh, this is about brutality. This is about revenge, getting back her championship. That's all she's been focused on since losing it, is getting, is beating Mickey James and retaking back the Knockouts World title. Both women at this point have exchanged either a pinfall or a submission at this point. Trying to soften each other up, trying to get deeper into that 10 count that follows a pinfall or submission. And, and now, Mickey, Deanna up the top of the ramp. Oh, and Mickey with a knee, and look at these two at the top of the oh. ramp. And you wonder what, what, what they have in mind right here, right now. Oh, oh! Suplex on the stage. There is, there is nothing there. There's no give there. And the official has gone up there to continue to check on Mickey James. Where is Deanna Perrazzo going? This is, it's a smart strategy though. If you can wear Mickey James out, secure the pinfall now, Mickey might be prime. Oh, oh it's a road case. It, try for the cover now, Deanna, because if you can, I'm, I'm not rooting for either one, but this might be a good time to go for a cover. Balls count anywhere. On top of Mickey James, here's the cover. And Mickey James has been pinned. And now the 10 count. Mickey has got to get to our feet before the 10 count is completed. Two, three. Count of three, Mickey James Four. barely moving. Let's go, Deanna. Mickey James is out. Could we be a matter Six. of seconds away from Deanna Perrazzo's third world title? Count of eight, oh, Mickey James is busted open. Count of nine, count of nine, and Mickey Mickey's James up. is back up to a foot. This match continues. But like you said, Mickey James is busted open. And Perrazzo is furious. That Mickey James is even able to continue. My goodness. You can look at, there's a glazed look over Mickey James' eyes, and she sees the ring, but that's about it, probably. <laughs> and oh! Mickey James operating out of instant. Now, Deanna taking back over. Oh, no! Ramon Deanna's low back in, into the ring apron. Deanna trying to create space here. And now with the steel chair, Mickey James able to evade. Look at Mickey James go. Oh, a single leg crab and sitting down tight. Single leg Boston crab. Mickey is sitting down tight. With blood all over her face, Mickey James is trying to fight through the pain. And getting to the bottom rope is Tiana Perrazzo. But again, there's no rope breaks no, in a Texas death match. You can only use that for leverage. 
now Mickey. Oh! Drop kick through the ropes. And Peraza did enough to get herself away from Mickey James, but it didn't do her a whole lot of good in the end. No, and now Mickey is seeing that blood. And that can do one of two things. It can either make you queasy or it can make you just ratchet up your intensity. Here. Okay, Mickey's got control of Deanna again. Oh, that was a knee strike with that knee brace. You're using the knee brace to her advantage. It's all legal. Oh, and another knee right to the side of the face. This might be Mickey James's opportunity. That's three unprotected shots from that brace right to the face of Deanna Perrazzo. But James realizes how tough Deanna Perrazzo is. He's got to do a whole lot more just to earn a pinfall or a submission against Perrazzo, but then keep her down for a count of 10. And that's the hard part. That is definitely the hard part, is trying to get that 10 count after the one, two, three. You can see, you see Mickey is, is, doesn't have all her strength there, that being busted open and, and the punishment she's already taken, it's very hard for her to move that table around. trying to set up all this table in the corner. Well, you saw Deanna wait for the perfect moment when, when Mickey's back was turned to her and then attacked.
chair up around the knee. Deanna is going to try to end the career of Mickey James right here, right now. If she connects with this. Oh, look at Mickey James. Mickey James got her leg out from the steel chair. Now Mickey James. to secure a pinfall and a 10 count. Watch this, all oh, this chair shot, just straight to the head. Sending Perrazzo crashing down hard. Now what's, Mickey's lining up. Into the count. Three now. Count of five. Is Mickey James about to retain her knockout world title? Shot. Oh, you can see it. Yes, you're absolutely right, D-Lo. Matt Raywall came down here as one of the many plans, of course. You gotta imagine Deanna Perrazzo cooked up before this matchup. And it still didn't save the Queen. You know, the Queen is hurting right now. And Mickey looks to try to take advantage of the situation. James once more trying to manipulate the table. Could this be enough to get rid of Deanna Peraza? And now, straight shots to the head of Deanna Peraza in that laceration. to figure out who got the worst of that. Perrazzo stirring first into the cover at least. A pinfall on Mickey James. And here we go. Perrazzo endured plenty going through that table but did enough to get herself into a pinning opportunity. Count of four. Is Perrazzo about to reclaim the Impact Knockouts World title? Seven. Count of eight. Count of nine. Mickey's, Mickey's up. up. Mickey's up. Are you kidding me? Take your head off. Take your head off. Oh, now Perrazzo. Oh, no. Deanna caught the chair. Go for the chair right to the rim. Sicky caught it. Tug of war with the chair. Oh. Into the tax. Tax into the hands, the knees of Perrazzo. Uh oh.
look at this. Let's take a look at Nikki James here. Taking the ball oh. right into the tax. Into the tax and then this chair shot to Deanna Perrazzo. Watch. Boom. And right that, on the side that, of the head. That busted Deanna Perrazzo wide open right there. And look at this. Dive off the top. Yo, and Matt Raywall came into this and got Deanna Perrazzo to stand back up. The match continued. Boom. The Queen's Gambit right through the table. But that still could not keep Mickey down. And the El Cabong right there. Mickey James taking out Ray Wald. And the kick. The mid kick, and then went for the mid DT. And Boom! That was enough to secure the one, two, three. Amazing! Mickey James came into this with a plan. She was able to bury Deanna Perrazzo in the rubble in the end to make sure she couldn't stand up in that 10 count. I don't know if Deanna could have stood up anyway, but just did it for good measure. Mickey James, still your Impact Knockouts World Champion, has cleared her path towards the Royal Rumble match. Thank you for joining us tonight at Hard to Kill in Dallas, Texas.